Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome once again to the CEC EDUSEC live lecture. Dear friends, in this session today we are going to talk on electrically conducting polymers, the materials of 21st century. And dear friends, for this we have again with us in our studios Dr. Amit Kumar. Dr. Amit is a senior assistant professor in Department of Chemistry, the Al Singh College, University of Delhi. Uh, dear friends, you know that uh, as we are uh, conducting a series on um, chemical thermodynamics also simultaneously but today we have chosen uh, for you this topic so that uh, we could give you some uh, additional information uh, regarding it uh, so uh, first of all I would like to welcome uh, our guest dr. Amit Kumar and I hope that the way he used to deliver his lectures with uh, uh, energy uh, I hope he is going to uh, give all his energies uh, to this lecture also so welcome to the edited lecture sir thank you very much so, uh, starting from this topic, we are going to talk on the uh, polymers basically right. and uh, we are going to talk uh, how electrically conducting uh, uh, polymers um, they are formed. Yes, exactly. So, over to you sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much Kitika and for your kind words of introduction. Uh, dear friends, we have been having a discussion of chemical thermodynamics earlier. Simultaneously, we have chosen to bring some uh, research areas into your uh, attention. The main reason for bringing the, the upgraded knowledge about these research fields is that in, uh, in the mind of undergraduate students, lot of uh, curiosity is there to understand what if they complete their BSc, MSc, what career they can look into. Research is, the, is one of the main uh, areas uh, where they can make their careers. But uh, when it comes to research, uh, in the mind of students, again there is a curiosity to understand what the research is all about. So by virtue of choosing these areas with an introduction and how people move, what kind of knowledge they create, how the research is done. So with those objectives in mind, we are bringing these uh, uh, informative talks on these various research areas. So today we have chosen a very important and uh, interesting and uh, more importantly is with an area which, uh, which ex has excited the enormous research interest of scientists. The area is called electrically conducting polymers. So in this talk uh, what I would cover is that with an introduction to what the electrically conducting polymers are, their structural features, their uh, various electronic properties, the charge carriers which are responsible for the electrical conduction in these polymers. With the discussion of all these things, we would try to see the application areas where these electrically conducting polymers find their applications. Because whatever we generate as the knowledge should find an application so as the scientific community can provide an input to the society with various technological products and processes and for the uh, and for the pro uh, the progress of any country all these technological advances are mandatory so it is the role of the scientists which is very much there uh, and they can contribute towards the progress of the country with the knowledge they do create so let us now talk about this area the electrically conducting polymers to begin with let me convey that uh, polymers polymers we know that these are uh, the, these are the long chain molecules which form as a result of uh, uh, as a result of concentration of small small unit cells which go to combine and to form a big polymeric molecule so what polymers are all about and what they actually been doing let us see that a right from a humble poly bag which we usually carry in our everyday day to day uh, carrying a, a processes. Poly bags are very important. Even the governments are trying to convey that these are not environmental friendly even though uh, they have infiltrated actually in our lives that we uh, cannot eliminate uh, uh, them from our day to day activities. So from humble poly bags to the most modern state of the art mobile telephones, polymeric materials are at the heart of various technological advances of the 20th century. 
and uh, the importance of these polymers owes its origin to their various uh, properties such as strength, elasticity, plasticity, toughness and frictional res resistance which actually uh, are of are comparable to those of metals. So, therefore, more importantly is the fact is these polymeric materials offer certain advantages over materials. What these advantages are? These advantages are their greater workability, chemical inertness, uh, of course, their lighter weight and more importantly the lower cost which makes them advantageous materials over the metals. So, there is one area however, which where the metals are leading. What is that area? The area is in relation to electrical conductivity. When we compare the electrical conductivity of metals with those of these polymers, these polymers are very low electric electrical conducting in nature. Their electrical conductivity is of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 14 simon per, sec per centimeter. So, therefore, if we compare the electrical conductivity with those of metals, there we find uh, their electrical conductivity of metals like copper and silver of the order of 10 raised to the power 4 to 10 raised to the power 6 simon per centimeter. So, therefore, there is a marked difference between the electrical conductivity of these polymeric materials and that and the metals. So, metals are very good electrical conductors. However, on the basis of electrical conductivity, we classify these polymers as insulators. The low electrical conductivity of these polymers uh, although has found very many uh, applications as insulators and uh, uh, and in they have infiltrated uh, in our life that we cannot now imagine now cannot even imagine the uh, the life without them however is question whether can we combine the advantage of polymeric materials the lighter weight greater workability chemical inertness and lower cost can we combine these advantages uh, and the electrical properties of metals in some materials or in other words can we come up with polymeric materials which are electrically conducting in nature. If we are being able to come up with this solution we will uh, be able to revolutionize the world in the 21st century. So, this question has always engaged researchers. In this uh, with this bent of mind researchers have also worked very hard. However, a real breakthrough in this area was achieved only in 1977 when three scientists uh, uh, together uh, came up with a breakthrough research. Uh, they showed that polyacetylene uh, when exposed to oxidizing or reducing agent could become nearly metallic conductivity could be introduced in the polyacetylene. Let us now see how the developments took place uh, in the journey of uh, uh, of of actually this devising this polyacetylene with the near metallic conductivity. In 1958 polyacetylene was first synthesized by Nata who is also who is also known for introduction of uh, uh, Ziegler Nata catalyst uh, on in honor of his name. So, this catalyst is used for uh, stereoselective uh, uh, polymerization of various polymers. So, in 1958 Nata and his co-workers first synthesized polyacetylene. This polyacetylene which they synthesized was actually an insoluble, infusible, intractable black powder. And when its conductivity measurements were done, it was found to be uh, electrical insulator with an electrical conductivity of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 14 semen per centimeter. So, with this very low conductivity the further research kept on going. However, one day one of the student of this scientist added 1000 times the Ziegler Nata catalyst into the reaction system and as a result they got thin shiny silvery films of polyacetylene rather than that of an intractable and infusible black powder. This these polyacetylene films uh, with an observation that they could be conducting the scientists were upbeat with this observation. However, when they were further subjected to electrical conductivity measurements these polyacetylene films were once again found to be electrical 
insulators with electrical conductivity of the order of 10 raised to the power minus 9 Simon per centimeter. So, with these observations, later research and investigations being carried on with an objective to synthesize uh, graphite uh, thin films uh, uh, made up of uh, these polyacetylene films. Uh, it was observed uh, exposure of these polyacetylene films to halogens could produce a material with electrical conductivity at an enhanced level of the order of 10 raised to the power 2 or 10 raised to the power 3 Simon per centimeter. With such high electrical conductivity, the scientists were again upbeat about it and a real breakthrough was achieved only when these three scientists, uh, uh, McDiarmid, Shirakawa and the Alan Heger at the University of Pennsylvania, when they provided the real breakthrough and documented that the polyacetylene films upon exposure to uh, halogens, the oxidizing or, or reducing agents such as uh, alkali metals, uh, a process these, 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 these uh, polyacetylene films undergo a process called doping upon exposure to, to these oxidizing or reducing agents to obtain daubed conjugated polymers and these daubed conjugated polymers were having very high electrical conductivity of the order of 10 raised to the power 4 Simon per centimeter. With such, uh, uh, with such observations, the, one of the company in Germany, BASFAG, we all know it is very well known company for introducing very innovative products, has come up with uh, daubed polyacetylene within uh, conductivity of the order of near 10 raised to the power 6 Simon per centimeter. So, with such uh, observations, now it, this led to an emergence of a new field of entirely new field of material science with uh, polymeric materials which could combine the advantages of polymers with that of uh, uh, the electrical conductivity of metals called the electrically conducting polymers. So, now let us understand uh, that how these electrical conductivity, uh, electrical con conducting polymers do actually exhibit the electrical conductivity. To understand this, we need to understand the doping process, which actually in induces the electrical conductivity. When, in contrast to uh, the doping process in a in conventional inorganic semiconductor, where a dopant species uh, occupies its position uh, in the lattice of the host material, for example, silicon and germanium semiconductors where it they were dubbed with the arsenic and indium metals, then uh, the dopant species occupies the interstices of the silicon and germanium metal and leads to formation of electron deficient and electron rich centers. These are called uh, holes and electrons. Now, these this is exactly not the phenomenon operating in the electrically conducting polymers. Now, it is important to understand how we can say that uh, these electrically conducting polymers, the doping process is not exactly the same what actually is the doping process in the uh, conventional inorganic semiconductor. This stems from the fact that for the understanding or in other words for the understanding of this fact we need to look into the structural features of these electrically conducting polymers. It is important for an electrically conducting polymers to have a conjugated backbone that is there should be an alternate single and double bond in conjugation. This leads to the and gives the planarity to the molecule also. More importantly is the fact these polymers have very high n isotropy ratio. What we mean by this n isotropy ratio is that the conductivity along the chain is very high as compared to the conductivity between the chains that is per perpendicular to the chains. So, therefore, the conduction is being observed with a dimension with a specific dimension. So, this is the uh, in this is the observation, this is the fact with these electrically conducting polymers that these are also called 
quasi one dimensional super lattices just because of the fact they have very high value of anisotropy ratio the conductivity is having a direction over here that is only in one dimension the electron uh, the electrical conductivity is exhibited by a, a single dimensional flow of electrons along the conjugated backbone or the charge carriers in other words. So, now we need to understand that uh, if this is so and uh, more importantly is the fact greater the conjugation length of a polymer greater is its electrical conductivity this was also observed. Again it was observed that when the temperature is increased the electrical conductivity of these polymers increases which is in contrast to metals. In metals we observe that with an increase in temperature the electrical conductivity do decrease because due to vibrational motion of the interspecies the flow of the electrons is being hindered at elevated temperatures. In the case of polymers therefore, it does mean that here only the electrons are not the charge carriers. Here there are certain modifications in the electronic species and structural distortions of the polymer also makes an important consideration to create a new variety of charge carriers which actually are responsible for electrical conductivity and therefore, the mechanism of conduction in these polymers is absolutely different from those of conventional semiconductors. This also emerges from the fact that the doping process is also is of different nature in conventional semiconductors compared to the uh, nature of doping process in these electrically conducting polymers. Fact remains is that when these uh, polymers uh, pi conjugated polymers are exposed to certain oxidizing agents or reducing agents they undergo partial oxidation or reduction and this leads to formation of positively or negatively charged polymeric complex along with a counter ion that is in other words if a positively charged polymeric complex forms then there will be a counter ion the negatively charged ion which is uh, formed as a result of acquiring electronic charge by the dopant species which uh, can be the halogens that is uh, when polyacetylene films are exposed to chlorine it leads to formation of uh, chloride ions as counter ions with that of the positively charged polymeric complex. So, therefore, here the electrons and holes are not the charge carriers, but actually here uh, the charge being put on the chain now interacts with the and, and leads to structural distortions and uh, leads to spinless charged particles. That is when the polymer species is uh, not having any charge, it is having spin due to the presence of unpaired electron and on the other hand if uh, uh, if uh, the polymer is uh, having a charge then it is not having an unpaired electrons which can have spin. So, here separation of charge and spin of the overall polymer species leads to the formation of different charge carriers these are called solitons, polarons and bipolarons. How actually they are formed let us have an illustration of what happens is that a uh, let us first of all consider polyacetylene itself. Polyacetylene is basically can exist in two different forms the trans uh, polyacetylene or the cis polyacetylene and uh, the presence of which of these isomeric forms depends on the temperature of the system that is uh, trans polyacetylene which is stable at high temperature that is uh, after only after 145 degree Celsius we observe trans polyacetylene before which we have uh, cis polyacetylene to it. So, polyacetylene 
is having a degenerate ground state when we consider only trans polyacetylene that is degenerate ground state means there is a change in sense of bond alternation of single and double bonds in polyacetylene molecules. It could be uh, uh, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7 position or it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 position the position of the double bond. So, there can be a change in sense of bond alternation and because both these species would be having the same energy, these are just the alternate forms of the two uh, of the same molecule. So, polyacetylene exists in two degenerate forms of which is having the same energy that is trans polyacetylene exists in the uh, degenerate state. The two forms that is we have different sense of bond alternation in two types of trans polyacetylene and sometimes a defect state is observed. Whenever we have a change in sense of bond alternation at a particular carbon atom there is one unpaired electron exists and that electron actually is not in the uh, bonded state or not in the antibonding state. So, therefore, it occupies a position somewhere in between the in between the uh, electronic energy levels. Now, we need also to understand that what the energy levels here in polymers are. Each unit cell interacts with a number of unit cell in a polymer chain and here for a polymer we do not have simple molecular orbital diagram rather we have uh, crystal orbitals or bands that is corresponding to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital in a small molecule in a polymer we have lowest unoccupied crystal orbital or in other words the valence band. Moreover as in a uh, small molecule we in its molecular orbital energy diagram we have uh, highest occupied molecular orbital then that uh, is basically sorry uh, sorry this has been a lowest unoccupied molecular orbital in a small molecule has its contemporary the lowest unoccupied crystal orbital or the conduction band. It was mistakenly said valence band it is conduction band whereas highest occupied molecular orbital in a small molecule has its contemporary in a polymer molecule polymer chain that is highest occupied crystal orbital which is actually a valence band. So, therefore, uh, corresponding to lowest unoccupied and highest occupied molecular orbitals in a small molecule we here have valence band and conduction band. So, the difference of energy between valence and the conduction band actually determines uh, the conductivity regime of a polymer that is if the gap between the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital this gap is higher then greater energy is required for an electron to jump to the highest occupied molecular orbital. So, which in fact uh, if a higher energy is required so band gap would be higher then in that situation the polymer will not be conducting in nature and the in defect state as I discussed about presence of soliton which actually creates a non bonded energy level in between the band gap which actually provides a accessibility to certain levels which are lower than the earlier which were present in the conduction band. So, now the levels emerges in between also. So, the energy levels for excitation of electrons from the valence band to certain intermediate levels becomes less and this actually leads to the introduction of electrical conductivity in these polymers. Now, when uh, such single unpaired electrons are introduced in the system, it, it may also lead to a positively charged species that is one electron is ejected then there is a defect pair rather than a single defect as I discussed about single soliton presence. Now, we will have a defect pair. This defect pair is that from one of the double bond one electron is taken up then at one carbon atom there will be positive charge then the other carbon atom 
of the two which were involved in a double bond will be having a single unpaired electron. So, this defect pair a positively charged uh, carbon atom and the carbon atom which has a, a single unpaired electrode this, uh, this uh, defect pair is known as polaron. So, at higher level of concentration of dopant species greater number of polarons do form which do interact and they form bipolarons. So, which actually is nothing but the uh, uh, two uh, the two unpaired electrons to interact in the nearby carbon atoms in the nearby uh, neighboring or vicinal uh, double bonds and to combine and leads to formation of two sites which both have positively charged uh, carbon atoms. So, this state is known as bipolarone. So, we have solitones, we have polarons, we have uh, bipolarones as charge carriers in these polymeric species. Now, what is the origin of difference in these charge carriers, uh, the polymers and the uh, conventional inorganic semiconductors? This emerges from, this difference emerges from one fact that is the polymers are molecular in nature and lack long range order as is present in conventional inorganic semiconductors. Because of consideration of both these, here the charge being put on the chain, polymeric chain leads to structural distortions and leads to uh, spin and charge separability within the polymeric chain and leads to formation of new charge carriers. New means we have just coined a terminology for these charge carriers rather than electrons and holes because of their different properties because they can interact with the polymer chain, they can produce structural distortions. Depending upon that what kind of distortions they produce, we have given them the names solitons, polarons and bipolarons. So, now it is clear that uh, temperature coefficient of conductivity of these polymers, the electrically conducting polymers is different from those of metals and uh, in addition. Uh, this actually is been brought about by the different uh, process of doping as well as difference in the uh, uh, dopant after doping what is the state of the polymeric chain and that of the conventional inorganic semiconductor. So, therefore, uh, there is a marked difference between the conduction mechanism of these polymers and the uh, conventional inorganic semiconductors. Well, now after having a discussion of the nature of charge carriers, after having a discussion of what are the structural features that are responsible for electronic uh, conductivity in these polymers, now it is time what kind of application do these polymers do find for us. For example, we can have uh, a variety of applications, we can, uh, we can uh, design applications that is uh, uh, solid state or low weight, lower weight batteries out of these polymers. We can design uh, light emitting diodes, we can design uh, photovoltaic cells and there are a number of other applications for example, electromechanical actuators, electrochromic display devices which find uh, their application in vast uh, varieties of uh, products which we can even think of. That is now uh, paperback displays, uh, smart windows uh, which can modulate the sunlight entering into the house and uh, LEDs. Uh, most importantly is the solar cells. So, these are the certain areas which if these polymers are conceptualized they have these polymers have the ability to transform and revolutionize the world in the time to come. So, there in view of these abilities these polymers are be called materials of the 21st century. So, that was also the topic of the talk that is electrically conducting polymers the materials of 21st century. 
Now, let us have a look at how these applications are actually conceptualized. Let us understand what is an LED is all about, what how a photovoltaic cell functions, how uh, uh, for example, uh, electromechanical actuator functions and uh, what role these polymers do have in conceptualizing all these, uh, all these uh, potential applications, how we can bring about and then only we can understand the importance of these polymers. And after this, we also need to understand whether these polymers have some drawbacks, because these polymers have been in concept for about 20-25 years now. They, there has been lot of research, but not many products have yet uh, reached to the uh, actual market, only a few. But for example, a solar cell example if we take, if suppose a solar cell, because of the low cost of the solar cells, if it is made out of only uh, these uh, polymeric materials, then we will be able to produce solar cells with at a very, very low cost. And cost is the only detriment actually, and which, uh, which is uh, producing stumbling blocks in commercialization of these solar cells and producing energy solutions. But now, if these uh, conducting polymers finds real applications in solar cells, then of course, we can think of um, everywhere we are having a talk of uh, energy, energy, energy and its generation. Now, this problem can be solved. So, continuous research needs to be done over here. So, with this objective, let us understand how these, uh, how these applications are conceptualized. Let us first of all take uh, the application of uh, electroluminescence or light emitting diodes for example, LEDs more popularly known as LEDs. LEDs we are know that these days are now in uh, uh, talks that uh, may be the LED bulb, LED lighting. So, there has been a hue and cry about from every nook and corner that kindly use the LEDs because they uh, consume less energy and they therefore, they save a lot of energy and uh, at low energy consumption itself, they produce greater uh, uh, light and this that is they are more efficient. So, what the LEDs are actually all about? In a, in a conventional LED, what occurs actually is there is a uh, some uh, film of a material around which there is an anode and there is a cathode, uh, all these are in some layer forms. And uh, whenever electric potential difference is applied, electrons and holes are injected from the electrodes and uh, the, uh, the anode and the cathode. And when they combine at the interface, they leads to production of uh, photons, that is generation of light is being brought about. Now, this generation of light, the efficiency of the device will only be dependent upon a balance between the electrons and holes being injected from two different electrodes. And how these do combine at the interface, that actually determines the uh, efficiency of a LED, the light emitting diodes. Now, what happens in a uh, polymer LED for example, let us say, actually a layer, thin layer, thin film of a polymeric material is sandwiched between two different layers. What these two different layers are? These two different layers are anode and the cathode or that is all on a glass surface. That is, uh, these two layer comprise of anode and cathode. What materials are being used? Indian tin, tin oxide, indium tin oxide is being used as one electrode and uh, alloys of some metals. For example, calcium and aluminum are being used at the other electrode. So, these alloy based electrode is serve as cathode whereas, ITO the indium, t indium tin oxide uh, coat represents the anode layer. And whenever we apply the electric potential difference across the two, what we do is we do provide the charge carriers, the electrons and holes which are injected, electrically injected into the uh, sandwiched layer, where at the interface the two combines and produces the phenomenon called luminescence, which leads to production of light. 
So this is how the mechanism of an LED is, how an LED works. So in all this, uh, poly, uh, there has been lot many polymers which has been designed polyparaphenylene, polyparaphenylene, vinylene and others which are uh, now uh, at a very advanced stage of research. Basically, there are still issues with these polymers which I will talk about little later. So, research only is, is needed to resolve these issues. We need to understand what are the issues with these polymers. So, we have understood how an LED is uh, formed out of these, con is these conducting polymers and what work it can do for us and now what modification in the polymer structure which we can do in order to get rid of the limitations associated with these polymers. So, which I will talk about the limitations or the disadvantages about these conducting polymers. Now, let us switch over our attention to the another uh, area of application that is called uh, the very important area that is called photovoltaic cells. In photovoltaic cell basically what happens, we need to reverse the phenomenon what actually occurs in an LED. In an LED we are supplying electrical energy and out of the electrical energy we are uh, electrically injecting the electrons and holes the charge carrier and letting them combine and to produce singlet excitons which leads to luminescence when they degrade in the, uh, in the reverse process. So, therefore, now we need to reverse this all process, we now we need to uh, expose certain polymeric films, polymeric material with, the, with that of the light. The light is nothing but the sunlight and absorption of this sunlight should actually leads to generation of these electron hole pairs which can travel to their respective electrodes and if they do so, the charge carrier migration we are having, we are observing and whenever a charge moves, it leads to production of electric current. So, therefore, uh, it means we need to reverse the phenomenon what occurs in an LED to have a functionalized photovoltaic device. Let us see how a photovoltaic device actually has, uh, what, how it can be made of a polymeric photovoltaic device. Usually, uh, up till now, we have only commercial technology in terms of uh, photovoltaic cells being made of conventional inorganic semiconductors, the silicon based uh, cells. But this also has some uh, disadvantage, there is inherent rigidity of silicon, there is a, a processability of silicon is also an another question and of course, it is high cost, it, these things are detrimental in their commercializing. Uh, in, in producing uh, vi commercially viable solutions to the energy to a common man. If now these polymeric materials are very low cost in nature, now what a polymeric photovoltaic cell can be, let us have an idea about this. Basically, we need a conducting polymer, what it can do is, it we have already known that there is uh, valence band, there is conduction band and uh, the, the migration of uh, charge carriers, the electrons and the holes, the soliton, polaron, bipolaron in terms of these positively and negatively charged uh, species, they need to migrate to the valence band. So, this migration will lead to the, uh, will lead to the uh, electrical conductivity, but what happens? For a polymeric uh, photovoltaic cells, we need to have two polymers. That is, a polymer, suppose we have a polymeric species and uh, uh, we uh, uh, expose this polymeric species with that of light. The source of light is sunlight, that is sunlight. Now, sunlight has very many different components. We have infrared rays, we have uh, visible radiation, we have uh, uh, UV radiation also, but to a very limited extent. The main source, main uh, uh, source of energy in the form of light which comes from sunlight is the visible light. So, our any material, 
uh, from which we want to generate electricity should have a uh, uh, absorption ability in the visible light that is a visible light should be able to uh, excite an electron from the valence band and should lead to the uh, should lead to the uh, production of uh, ex excited state by a migration of uh, electrons from valence band to that of conduction band. Now, this can occur in a daubed conjugated polymer, where uh, certain levels are being created in between the valence and conduction band. Now, however, whenever we have an excited state of a polymeric species, it does not mean that the electron and pairs, electro, sorry, electron and the holes which are created at, at the valence band, they are uh, independent species. If they are independent, then the electrons being ejected to certain higher level that can travel to the respective electrode, but this is not so. They are paired actually. So, that is why only the, the across the optical band gap, the ele ejected electron, excited electron can come back to the ground state. So, therefore, this has some binding energy associated with it. So, unless we get rid of this phenomenon, we cannot have electrical conductivity. So, what happens is that we provide another uh, species. Usually, these days fullerenes are or derivatives of fullerenes are being uh, tested as acceptors of electrons. So, there is one polymeric species where upon, excite, uh, upon exposure to sunlight, excitation of electrons to the conduction band occurs and uh, the conduction band of this polymeric species lies at the higher level than that of the conduction band of the fullerene. So, now there is a at the interface where at the interface of the two, there is a possibility of electron migration from conduction band of the polymeric species to that of the fullerene or derivative of fullerene. So, now with this, this leads to the separation of electron and holes. If this can be sustained, now the electron can now travel to the respective el, uh, electrode that is the uh, cathode. So, therefore, similarly hole can travel. So, electron and holes can travel to the respective electrodes. So, where in between these electrodes we can have uh, these conducting material, these donor and acceptor molecules. The donor one is the polymer uh, and the acceptor usually these days is the fullerene molecule or the derivatives of fullerene. But the fact of matter is, what are the characteristics of the materials of this uh, donor and acceptor nature? The idea is that both the valence and conduction band of the acceptor should lie below that level of donor and acceptor level of the uh, donor. Donor means uh, a polymeric molecule which upon absorption of uh, light uh, bring about excitation of electrons into the conduction band and where this electron can be at the interface of the polymer and the fullerene can lead to uh, my, its migration from conduction band of polymer to conduction band of fullerene, where it can come again and can give it uh, to the uh, respective electrode and a, and a uh, cyclic process of, uh, of uh, uh, coming and uh, of migration of electrons and holes is set in and this actually leads to migration of charge and which actually is nothing but the electricity, the electric current. So, therefore, polymeric uh, typical polymeric uh, photovoltaic cell operates in this fashion and in this manner. So, as uh, we have seen that how polymeric uh, photovoltaic cells operate. So, now uh, let us see other uh, applications also. For example, I also talked about electrochromic display devices. Basically, uh, electro, what is an electrochromic display device? It basically emerges out of nothing, but there can be upon excitation of, uh, uh, upon absorption of energy, uh, there can be excitation which can lead to different colors of the same chemical species. So, reversible uh, switching of colors uh, of the polymeric species uh, can lead to uh, conceptualizing an application called electrochromic uh, display devices. This can be, this application can be designed for designing smart windows for example. If we coat a 
glass of a window pan with that of a uh, potential uh, polymeric species uh, which upon absorption of light can change its color reversibly that is suppose uh, that that is in the sunlight it will be having different color than that of what it will be having when there is not much sunlight being present. So, therefore, reversible uh, switching of color of polymeric species can also result in uh, various uh, uh, electrochromic display devices also uh, in like the paper back displays which we nowadays talk about uh, you would be having an idea about very many companies which are which are uh, these days uh, uh, giving advertisement that they have their gadgets which have paper back display that is uh, they have modulated the uh, radiation which emerges out of the screen itself. So, paper back display they talk about this also emerges out of this application and this application can also be uh, can also be conceptualized out of these con electrically conducting polymers. There is another application the electromechanical actuators what actually these uh, electromechanical actuators are to be able to understand this let us talk about some interesting observations we have heard about robots artificial muscles for example in medical technology nowadays we need so many things so artificial muscles is also a concept which we can think of now how this is made if a polymer is uh, is is in brought in contact of a reference electrode uh, within an electrolyte matrix and uh, if we apply the electric potential difference then it can lead to uh, it can lead to accumulation of of electrolyte species near the at the surface of the polymeric species and and a concentration gradient so developed will lead to insertion of ionic species into the polymeric matrix and which actually leads to its expansion or in other words the swelling in Lehman's words swelling. So, the size of the polymer will get raised uh, the, the matter that is the polymeric material which is there the, uh, the volume which it, it is occupying it will increase and now uh, upon changing the applied potential difference this can again lead to uh, the, the migration of ionic species from within the polymeric matrix again to the electrolyte system. So, therefore, this will lead to again uh, decrease in volume. So, therefore, depending upon the requirement we can bring about uh, or we can conceptualize an application called electro uh, mechanical actuator which actually is just nothing but uh, uh, a concept where we can with which we can design artificial muscles, robots and etcetera things like these. Now, with the, this application let us now talk about uh, uh, other applications there can be sensors, sensors for um, sensors is a very important area of applications people talk about. Uh, sensor can be of any, any chemical species uh, around us or within a complex chemical mixture we can uh, carve sensors out of we can conceptualize sensors out of these uh, electrically conducting polymers also. So, uh, there are enormous number of uh, applications of these electrically conducting polymers if we go to talk about these can lead to uh, this can lead to an enormous discussion without getting into that let me convey that with these for example, uh, non-linear optical transmission we can have a complete shift in the bandwidth which is available the internet bandwidth which is available to us nowadays we can expect if this uh, technology comes out of this uh, electrically conducting polymers. So, therefore, a number of applications are there and uh, all these applications certainly have the potential to, uh, to, revolutionize, to revolutionize the world in which we live uh, the age of life it can produce. So, in view of this these electrically conducting polymers are known as uh, uh, materials of 21st century. So, if these electrically conducting polymers have so much potential, so what is the drawback? There are certain drawbacks also associated with these electrically conducting polymers or in other words we can say the limitations. Where the limitations lies? The limitations lies in the fact that their uh, processability is one limitation more importantly is that 
exposure to certain to oxygen atmospheric oxygen it certainly lead to uh, formation of uh, carbon oxygen double bond and lead to uh, basically it, it 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 may lead to uh, uh, this conjugated backbone can get disturbed and uh, as a result of this uh, disturb disruptions in the conjugated backbone it can lead to uh, the low electrical conductivity. So, therefore, basically this is the drawback or the limitation with this area that uh, environmentally uh, stable and processable polymers which we are not being able to make as a result of doping because these doped polymers are uh, energized species and can easily react with atmospheric oxygen. So, there are issues with the uh, environmental stability of these polymers and their processibilities, the solubility, there are issues with these polymers which still needs to be resolved. So, in view of this now we as scientists can work out our solutions. A solution may emerge out of the fact that we can design certain polymers which do not need the doping that is we can design polymers which have very low band gap that is the energy difference between the valence and the conduction band is very low. So, that so that with this low band gap we need not create certain energy levels in between the valence and conduction band through the uh, through the insertion of charge carriers by way of doping. Uh, so, in, in, in that situation in that sense these polymers would get stable. So, for the last 8 to 10 years this area has been very active and scientists are uh, continuously uh, devising polymers which are of low band gap in nature. So, that there is no need of doping and hence there will be no need of environmental stability issues. With this objective very many strategies are being followed the strategies of introducing mo some modifications uh, on the polymeric conjugated backbone substitution of the uh, carbon atoms. Uh, there can be other strategies also donor acceptor strategies also being used where substitution of some donor and acceptor kind of moieties are being introduced and copolymerization that is uh, copolymerization of uh, one homopolymer with that of the other is also being used. So, several strategies are being in use for designing low band gap polymers. So, such that once these low band gap polymers are designed so that there is no need for doping. Now, there will be no environmental uh, uh, environmental uh, issues. Environmental issues means environmental stability issues of these polymers. So, with such uh, objectives research is on this line and more important is the fact that we as a person which we are practicing science we need not uh, we need not talk about technological aspects of this we only need to talk about the scientific aspect about what modifications in the chemical structure we can do so that it produces a, a desired change in electronic structure and this electronic structure uh, produces polymers with tailor made conduction properties which can suit different applications. So, we as scientists we need to continuously we as student of science continuously should stress upon the uh, understanding of chemical principles which we are usually studying in our course so that we can apply them later in these research areas and can then have conceptualized knowledge which can be used by people in the industry and the technology technocrats who can build up technology based on this knowledge and hence can serve with us with certain products and processes. With these words I should say thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to introduce this research area. With this note, thank you sir. Thank you so very much uh, that uh, you have uh, given the valuable inputs uh, to this particular lecture. I hope that all the students who might have watched this would be benefited uh, with this lecture. And dear friends, if you have uh, any queries, you can mail us at uh, info.cc at the rate nick.in. And we would uh, come again with uh, another topic. Uh, till then, keep watching us. Thank you sir. Thank, thank you, so you very much. much.